Carol here. Warm welcome once again to my craft room. Now we're going to do another slimline card. We're going to be using the Barnyard Bunny stamps and also the matching attached, you could call them, dies. I also went into my stash to get the LDRS Creative Sun and Clouds die set and of course the Seesaw Slider. There's a little look at the bunny set. I did stamp out two of each image. So there's 28 stamps in all, but that includes the sentiment. So here I'm going to rush right into the uh, tutorial. I'm using a Copic Friendly Stadler marker. It is probably a 0 0.03, but I can't. I don't have it right here by me, but I think so. And when I stamp, I do use the uh, stamp press, the Fiskar stamp press, so you do risk a few images. <laughs> Excuse me, I have a sore throat. That's why I haven't got this tutorial up. It was difficult to talk and do the voiceover. But of course, I have to have my cheese. Yes, I don't think I have a video up where I'm not eating something. I apologize for that in some ways. In some ways I don't because you do have to eat while you're creating, right? So my camcorder seems to be coming in and out of a few places because I think I'm a little too close. But I wanted you to see the simplicity of using Copics and coloring these images. You still can do a three-stage uh, coloring process, you know, light, medium to dark, or dark, medium to light, whichever way you do it color but uh, yeah very simple uh, images and they're as cute as the button. Now this is the tractor which I adore and I love that um, I'm going to do some dots and some mud on the tire. It does have that part on the bottom. I'm pretty no it doesn't sorry it doesn't. I put it there <laughs> on point this as the three stooges would say on point this. So I went back, I wanted to show you this, to take a black marker and do the eyes. The eyes, uh, you know, are the life gate of any person. And, you know, we, you want to make sure that the eyes pop in your images. I really like that look, that they don't get lost in the face. It only takes a second and, uh, yeah, it's a good habit to get into. Now I'm going to do the tractor in red. The actual, um, let's say the, um, I, I'm trying to think of the word that I want to use because this is a very different slimline card. You will see that as we go along. And I wanted to accent it, maybe that's the word, in red and have everything pop in the red color because when I think of a farm, because I live on a farm, uh, I think of red tractors, I think of uh, bunnies, we have them all over the place, they're beautiful, and I, I just think of this vivid red for some reason. You know, you have the red barn, uh, it is a wonderful accent color to bring out your project. So once we get them colored, I'm going to take the panel that you can see I just cut all the way around it. I don't waste any time. I just want these images. I need them to fit on the smaller of the Empress uh, acrylic, uh, you know, die cutting plates. So I just cut around it to make it fit. And because I'm doing two of each image, it was really nice to stamp them on one page and stamp them again with my Fiskar stamp press on another page. And then when I take out the dies, I can move them over to the next page, and here they all are, and I know exactly where they're going to fit because I'm taking them out one by one. So now I'm going to take a break again, and I'm going to have a little bit of lunch. <laughs> Have you ever seen a tutorial where the woman eats so much it's ridiculous? But you know what? I went to the bakery and I got some fresh um, Italian bread and some jalapeno Havarti cheese and some nice fresh cut uh, turkey breast 
tomatoes. Oh yeah, it's full. Uh, I, I could go on and on on what's in there, but it was delicious. And, uh, you know, yes, I could have taken it out of the edit. Of course I could, but you know, if you follow me, I, I just love my food. And uh, when you create and you create all day, you have to eat it. So I just kept it in for you to get a laugh. Now, this, you're going to think this makes no sense because there isn't any black in my slimline card. But what I want to share with you that might be a helpful hint is when I do a project that I know I'm going to do another one, like I'm going to do another project, and I get out my little folders here. They zip up. They're the exact size, actually, of a slimline card. I make thousands, thousands of these die cuts. <laughs> And I make them in black and I make them in white because I don't know what day or what I'll use. But generally, I use black or white. And then I store them in these Ziploc bags that I get at my stationery store. And that way, I know exactly in the front I have everything that's black, right down to the little brad I'm going to use, to the white. And then I have these page protectors that I put them in individually so that I'm not, you know, they're just floating all over the place in that plastic bag. I separate them in these plastic bags. Then I put them in this fold uh, Ziploc, uh, you know, bag, I'll call it. It's very thick and it's wonderful. And then I have, if I need another, you know, say I messed it up, which you know I do, I can just go to the Ziploc thing and grab another whatever I messed up. And then I have it in with my... Um, uh, oh, my shuttered nurse. My brain just went dead. I have it in with my uh, design team large zip-up folder where I keep all of the projects that I receive separately. And this goes with the projects that are just coming out, the, the most recent release. And uh, there's lots in there. I have a lot of cards. I have my... Um, recipe book that I'm going to complete and I have one more card to get up for you and then we'll be able to round up this release from LDRS Creative and I enjoyed creating each one of them and I uh, keep them in a large folder like I said I have the date on it I know when it came out and what's in it because it's clear you know easy peasy so now I'm setting out everything I have to use for the seesaw die so what I came up with, I wanted to have this crazy uh, seesaw slimline card. But the seesaw, I'm going to have the seesaw going in uh, one direction and going in the other direction. So you're not going to have just one seesaw going up and down. You're going to have, we call them teeter-totters. I don't know if it makes a difference, seesaw teeter-totter. But when I grew up, we had a teeter-totter. I don't know if that's Canadian and then American, it is seesaw, I'm not sure. But I tell you, it's a lot of fun, Whether no matter what it is called, what you call it. And here I'm going for my Brad stash. I wanted to use the tiniest little Brad I had. I had a lot of Brads. So I took out these Brads and I found the, you know, they haven't been opened yet, I don't think. And I wanted to see which one of these white ones were the smallest. And I'm going to just show you. Look how teensy-weensy that one is. Although the other one's small, that other one really is tiny. It's a mini-mini. And I'm going to use two of them, four of them. No, two of them. Because it only takes one for each uh, seesaw element. Now, I already took the card stock. I cut it in two different... Uh, colors of green and I just cut the cardstock down lengthwise and then I got a cloud die and I cut into each uh, cardstock you know the two colors and made these um, cloud designs and then I put them over top of the slimline card I extended it on the top and I extended it on the outsides because I'm going to build my own um, project and I'm going to build my own card base because it's going to be different. It slides into an acetate bevel 
envelope. You're going to love it. I think you're going to use it all the time for fun birthday cards, especially for children. And this is the ultimate child's birthday card. So let's go over it. I'm going to leave a link to the tutorial that Angie put up on how to use the seesaw die. It is very easy. It's not long. Um, and you will understand it maybe more than how I'm showing it here. So what I did is I die cut that um, two placement. You get the hole in the middle and then you get the two long edges that are going to make the seesaw. So uh, then you're going to get these football and they're already scored in half. You're going to bend them and put one of the bends underneath and one on the top, one on each side. Then you're going to glue another football over top to hold these together. You're going to do this on each one of the long lines that you see here because and you're going to watch out for that glue because you want to make sure that these freely go up and down on the cutout element here. So each one of them you're going to bend two of the footballs, put them side to side, then add a football. You're going to do this on each side. So you're going to flip it over and you're going to do the opposite side. And then I took my pokey tool and made the hole just a tad bit more open, you know, because you have paper over top of it. But what I did was I put that die on each side. So I die cut it on the white before I actually put the green paper on. And then I turned it over with the green paper on there, the hills. These are supposed to be hills, not clouds, hills. And I die cut it from this side. So you have the actual die cut in both the front and the back. And the reason for that is the thickness, obviously, right? It is very thick. Now you're going, I'm going to be covering this with a billion of these little images. It isn't going to make any sense. It's not going to be something where you look at it and you say, wow, that's a, such a cute scene. No, it's going to be four scenes. and But it's going to make sense because it's a barnyard uh, bunny farm, you know? And so you can get away with adding all of these different scenes on each one of these back and forth football seesaw slider images. And it is going to make sense. For children, they're going to love it because all they're interested in is pulling those tabs up and down that we're going to make. Now, I did have to take another die. Sorry about that. This one is not from the LDR set. I needed a small barn, and this is the closest thing I could get to it. And I wanted to add this as a shaker, okay? I wanted every window to have a different color bead, and I wanted the top portion of the barn to have gold beads. Here's the colors that I used. I am going to have them in the description coming up in the reds. It's, it's the four colors of red I always use when I have to do something in the red tones. So here we go. We, you want to put a brad in those holes. You're just matching up this teeter-totter piece. It's kind of like the T piece and you're going to put that brad in from the front to the back then place it down, but not too firmly. You want this to move back and forth. And that's what's nice to use a tiny brad because the opening clips aren't that thick. And so it moves wonderfully and you're going to love it. Next thing you want to do over top of this when you set the brad into your T movement is the foam circles. Now, as high as your foam circles are is as high as you're going to have to raise this card when you put a backing on it, right? So, and you want to make sure that these are free from any glue when you add your um, foam strips or whatever you use to raise it up to put the back piece on your slimline card. And as you can see, I have to make my own backing. And then on top of your foam circle, you're going to add either a football or one of the circles that come in the set. It really doesn't matter. The circles are nice to use if you want to cut the oval part off if your image is very tiny. But if you want that a nice large, you know, like the barn I'm using in the tractor, you want to put a football on it. On the back, you're not going to see it, but I think the football going on top of your foam dot is going to really serve a good purpose because it's going to raise it up 
and keep that back card away from the actual mechanism. Now you're going to get one of these strips. It has uh, score marks on it. I just, I don't pay attention to those uh, because of the design that I'm going to use. But I do use my 140 pound cardstock and I do put one on top of the other so that it is really a nice, almost like a cardboard piece because whoever gets the card is going to be pulling on this thing and so I wanted to secure it with two, one on top of the other. Then you want to baby powder it to death. Yes, get you have so many sticky things going on here and you want to free up the mechanism. So I just throw that baby powder on with no rhyme or reason. I get the baby powder at the dollar store when nothing's a dollar and it smells delicious, just like Johnson & Johnson baby powder we used back in the day. I sprinkle it on my project, I sprinkle it on my hands, and yum, it smells good from that. It doesn't smell like food anymore. It smells like pretty powder. Now I'm going to put the slider mechanism. I didn't measure how, you know, if you don't want it to stick out far from the end, obviously you're going to move it back a little ways. But I didn't care once I started this design because I, I just wanted it to to be able to place some nice little bunnies going up the strip. So I needed a little bit more space to do that. So I added the two glue dot, two raised uh, foam circles there side by side. And then I put the, this is just for security, just to have, you know, so you're pulling on that thing and put the baby powder on there because on the sides of these raised glue dots, glue dots, there's circle foams, Carol. Uh, it's sticky and I don't want anything sticky. I want it to be all freed up. Then you're going to put two of these elements that are pre-scored. You're just going to glue them together and these are actual slider protectors. That's what I call them, the old slider protectors. I have one on one side and I have one going in the opposite direction on the bottom. So the child having this birthday card or whatever card, I mean, I would have fun receiving something like this. I think it's adorable. It, it's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just a seesaw interactive card with fun elements and two ways to have some fun with it, with the sliders going in different directions. So then I put my foam tape, raised it up twice, as high as the element is on that T that we made. So and you don't have to put it in a lot of places, and I'll show you why. Here I put it on, but because my card is extended with this die, you know, the slimline corner scallop die from LDRS Creative, I needed just a little bit more room on the end there. So I just I cut another one and this isn't as heavy as the paper that I used right there. I only needed a little piece. I cut it with scissors. I didn't care if it was straight or it wasn't straight. I'm going to put another piece over top because I love the thickness of it and that just adds stability to me and these little sliders are fabulous. They're not sticking because we have three pounds of baby powder going on in there. And now comes the fun part of decoration and knowing what to put on those football slider tabs. You know, what's going to slide, what's not going to slide. Now, obviously, you want to have the largest items uh, sliding, I think. I think that's what makes it fun. That's why I came up with the idea of taking one of these houses, which I made into a barn. And you can see on the top roof, that right beside the roof is a window and I cut the T out of that window so it didn't look so much like a church building. It looked more like a barn. So I took the T out of there and then I'm going to add all different seed beads in each section of that barn, we'll call it, uh, even though it was a house. Um, and then I took some of my embroidery thread and I made myself two braids going down with this bright embroidery thread that matched my barn and this is what's going to cover 
the two sections on the outside so you don't see inside the mechanisms going on. All of that tape, all of that paper and everything just doesn't look good. So I thought, how can I hide that? And I have done this in other tutorials, you know that. I just braid some um, em embroidery. Uh, 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 I can't get it out. Uh, embroidery thread into, um, you know, a beautiful, well, I just said it, I braided it. <laughs> then I have my glue gun and I have gold glue in it at the present time, but I am going to add clear. You can see the gold glue. Doesn't matter, you're not going to see it. And then I have to leave that pull tab area free from the braid. Otherwise, you, oops, sorry about my head. You won't be able to, um, oh, I'm getting another one out. I'm showing you the difference there between the gold and the clear. Uh, you got the gold and the clear when you bought the glue gun. So here we go. That, that looks terrible to me to see that on the other side. I mean, it just gives children, what's in there? You know, they want to pull it apart to see what's in there. <laughs> so you got to hide it. I mean, that's crazy, isn't it? I've always shared this idea of covering the sides, especially, you know, with anything. You can use anything to uh, just fill in this space. I just got back. I made a double batch of chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> I ran downstairs, made a double batch of chocolate chip cookies because my granddaughter, Olivia, stopped by yesterday and she said, Nan, where's the cookies? <laughs> I said, in the packages, I have to make them. You know, you got flour and chocolate chips and butter. and I make my chocolate chip cookies with butter. I really like that. But anyway, this is the guts of the inside of that uh, the mechanism that you put down at the start, which is two lines and a dot, right? So I took these lines, and I'm going to make a ladder up the side of the barn. You have to have a ladder on the side of your barn. How are you going to get up to the top where all of the hay is and all of your uh, tools and stuff that you store in the top section of your barn? We took down our barn some years ago, but, you know, it's uh, it, it, we always had a ladder up on the side of the barn. So anyway, yeah, so I'm just making out of those four pieces, I'm making a tiny ladder. and It's awesome. And it's white. And it's all white why me I'm gonna put it right beside my barn and my barn is a shaker you can make a shaker element out of any size anything I show you that you can right here this is a small little barn all you have to do is have that uh, I use the dory strips but you can use any strips you just have to cut them super super tight you know just little so now I'm going about it I put glue on the back of my barn I put it down on my super thick acetate and you're going to have to have acetate on both of these pieces to keep your little seed beads in and every section like I said I end up putting when you see the glue or the double-sided tape you'll see all the sections I sectioned it off into let me see one two three four five six sections of six different colors of seed beads. I thought it would be really cute to look through the windows. At the top, I put gold because I thought of haystacks and gold. I don't know. It just seemed fitting. And um, I wanted this to be a real barnyard. It's called Barnyard Bunnies. And I want it to be a fun barnyard scene. Now, here's where I'm taking out the cross sections that cross hatch the windows. I want to make a few uh, in there. I kind of crisscross it of taking out the elements so it doesn't look like there's glass in there. And another thing you could do here, which would be beautiful, is take out your alcohol inks and your acetate and make some stained glass. <clears throat> you know, just squirt it all out different colors and put it on the back of here. And in the light, all of these uh, window sections would look like stained glass. Then I put a little duck looking out of the one section. I have some chickies up in the top section of the barn. And I'm really loving it. If you've watched me for some time, I generally don't work with little images. You know, I'm more of a vintage maker of cards, of flowers and vintage things. So this really challenged my brain 
to uh, think small, like think small little elements and how to create them. And you know, on this, I can't do anything, just one, um, I don't know, element at a time. I did have in my mind, as soon as I ordered the seesaw die, slider die, I saw Angie do a video and I said, I've got to order it. Here I'm making a door. So I'm just, it didn't have a door there, a real one. So I just cut up and over and made it open up. And now we have that. We have a door. I turned it on the opposite side. I copic colored the front and the back and inside all the little groovies. And we are going to proceed to put down the glue. The double-sided, oh, hello. Yes, you always have birdies in your belfry, in your barnyard. I mean, that's just a given. Mice and birds and cats. <laughs> I'm not going to say any more. So here we go. I don't know why I laid that, but here I cut these Doreen strips in half uh, to put on there. Now this is detailed fussy stuff. If you don't like detailed stuff, uh, you're not going to do a shaker with this because um, it takes a lot of time. And that's why I didn't have <coughs> excuse me, this tutorial up right away because I wanted to play with it. I wanted to see what I could do with it that was different. I wanted to have the seesaw elements, you know, those slits there, the four of them. I didn't want to have to color on the white cardstock, you know, make grass and a, a scene, like a sky and stuff. I wanted to have something different. So I thought the cloud dyes were perfect for hills, green hills. I think of the green hills of Kentucky. I don't know why that just came to my brain. Isn't it funny? And I have here at least 40 elements of, because I doubled everything up. And then I'm just going to grow a flower right there because I could. It's so beautiful. It's a beautiful day here in Niagara. Beautiful. Not high humidity. The wind is just perfect. Uh, I think it's probably about 75, 80 degrees. I mean, with the humidity, we were over 100 there for about three weeks. It was terrible, but now it's a beautiful day. And um, so here I'm just taking, going to go back here before I drift off into another subject. Here I'm taking, I'm um, spitting on my finger and grabbing. I don't know why I didn't use my pick stick. That's kind of gross. But how else are you going to pick it up? Right? Do I use my pick stick? No. Or you could use the end of your glue right there. You'd have enough on it. You could pick up an image. So I have to decide, okay, this is a little thick, but not too thick uh, to put on there. I love this dirty pig, you know, with the, with the mud on the bottom and the little duck or chicken, whatever you want to say there, is loving up beside the pig. It's so crazy cute with the little heart. Pig's eyes are closed, cute as a button. Yeah, and then you, you become, see the duck coming out that window that I cut out? I love that. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> First, I can see why, uh, you know, people love to have these kind of uh, small featured little animals and work with them. And especially if you're a detailed person like I am, it is cutesy wootsy and you do like it. And uh, and I'm going to say another thing. Always take the tape off the front, the top and the bottom if you want to curve it. I decided to cut it and then go over. It was giving me some problems just being so tiny that I felt it was easier to pull it towards me and cut it and then uh, add more. And then you're going to add whatever section you want to put the seed beads in uh, that way. I'm not sure why I didn't cut out the... Oh, I know why I didn't cut this window out and I cut the other one. And once you put your seed beads in, you're not going to see that uh, crisscross in the window. So that's why I didn't do that. Then I put the little piggy up, like up on the side of the barn. Kind of lifted up, glued down there. And I'll put a little double-sided tape behind him to lift him up. And this was a really fun project to do. Time-consuming, but fun. And if you're used to doing this type of thing with small little images, it would take you no time. It's just that I had to, 
you know, I had to go with whatever my brain was telling me to do, and I wanted to have a double seesaw on my slimline card, one at the top, one at the bottom, and I wanted to have multiple seats, not just one seat. I wanted it to go vertical instead of horizontal. So there we go. I'm putting the seed beads in. I'm sorry I didn't have it in frame. I had my camera tight down there for some reason. I apologize for that. Uh, sometimes you get so involved into your project, you, you don't remember to look up at your camera and make sure that you're focused and everything is in place. But I'm pouring the beads into each section that I've divided the barn into. And then we're going to have a fun little barn scene with all little shaky elements for whoever gets this card. And um, yeah, it was just fun. Here, I don't know why I kept this in. I had I had about 22 hours of edit, uh, 22 hours of work that was on my camera that I had to bring down to, I don't know, an hour. I think I brought it down to, and I was too close once again. You can see all the colors inside everywhere when you open the door. I have four different color seed beads, so that was fun. And it's hard to see because of the shine. I didn't put too many of them in. I wanted to be able to shake them and see them, all the elements in there. So that was a lot of fun. I took a black Copic marker and did the outside edges so that you didn't see the tape, the double-sided tape. And I did not go over all of the animals. The reason being, I wanted to, uh, yeah, that was fun, wasn't it? I really liked the clean look on this. So there was white, red, green, I brought out a green, and uh, gold, yes. So here we have our heels. Now I have to decide which, not only do you have to decide, let me just say this, if you put your element, your focal point, on this slider football, you have to seat it so that when you push it over, you know how far, you, you don't want to go over the edge because you're going to uh, put it into some type of envelope closing. And that's what I'm going to make for you here. So I think, no, I'm going to do the, yes, this is the envelope. I got out some punches and I chose to use my, that brown one there with the yellow little sticker on it. It had tiny little scallops and I like that. I didn't want to use the other scallop one. Here's the 12 by 12 sheets of paper I'm using for this. It's not too thick and it's not too thin. 65 pound actually. And, um, so I had this in my mind, okay? I, I wanted to be able to see the seed. That was important to me. I did not want to put it into an envelope and hide it. I wanted to have acetate and I wanted it to bevel and I wanted this scallop to come over the edge of the card. So when I slide it down into the beveled card, I'm going to have this cute little fancy scallop on the top because, see, it just looks too naked on the card itself, going down the edges. That straight edge is not doing anything for me uh, till I, until I get all the images on it. But here, what I did was you want to measure going over. This will determine, the height will determine how many score marks you make, right? You're going to need two score marks. You're going to need one for the fold over, and you're going to need another one to come down and tuck underneath. There. So you have two score marks and your scallop. Now you have to decide how far over you're going to need to make the same scallop. So all you do there is open this up and measure it. I want to cut it off. Now, let me say this. If you don't want to have a bevel, if you just want to put your acetate, slide it down, you need a tiny bit of bevel because I have that barn which sticks up a bit. But if you don't want as high a bevel as I put on it, you can put a, uh, a bottom on this, a scalloped little bottom, to just, I don't know, I'll show it to you. I do make it, I don't use it. I wanted to show you that you could do it. Now that bottom part, that you, if you put it on, is not going to go all the way over. Obviously you have the push tab. But this push tab is so much fun. Here I'm just making two um, score marks on my score tool here. This is the Stampin' Up one. 
and uh, I haven't used it for ages, but it was behind me, close by, so I thought, let's do it. Had a little bit of glue on there, so here we go. We're going to cut it off. We're going to make scallops on one side. It's going to be identical to the other side. In the um, image of it, the look of it is going to be the same, and you want to have it seated the same. So the same amount of space between the score mark and the scallop on the top. And always remember, whatever you put on those footballs, you don't want it to touch uh, over onto the scallop. Now the fun thing about this uh, beveled envelope that's exceptionally fun, you decorate on that as well. You decorate on the acetate. You get two scenes in one. You get the envelope scene. Once you slide that down, all those characters are going to fit right into the characters that you put on your slimline card. It's awesome. You're just going to love it. I'm serious. You get to decorate two actual um, platforms. You have the envelope and then you have your slimline card. You're only decorating one side, which is a miracle for me. I generally do four sides. But this helped me to be able to uh, get all that out, you know, that I didn't have to decorate everything. I could leave the back plain. Now, see how I added that little piece? I have to cover it, right? I have to cover it from right past my braid. And then I'll just make a mark, cut it off. That's going to go on the back. It's going to look clean. And it's going to slide down into my beveled uh, scallop envelope which goes with the slimline corner scallop die although this is a tad bigger but kids don't care the bigger the better and if it has a whole lot of animals on it and everything moves you know it's going here going there they love it I know my grandchildren would love it even my teenager grandchildren would love it my 20 year old and older would love it it's a fun crazy card now, I want to have scallop, I want to have indentations on the back. I don't want it to be plain paper. So I did that by just scoring right close so that I get this look, that indent look on the back. It wasn't plain and simple. You had just a little bit of something going on when I put this glued on the back. You want to, yeah, make sure you glue that little piece down that we had to add because I made it longer. And uh, that's the art glitter glue. And then you're going to have to put two-sided tape, whether you run it through your Xyron machine, you put it with your runner, or you put it with the double-sided tape like I did. I did not leave a space that didn't have glue on it. I don't want it to lift, bevel. The only thing I want to bevel is the crazy beveled envelope. And I'm telling you, my friends, there's not another card like this. <laughs> You're going to have a one-of-a-card, one-of-a-kind card if you go with this route. Because this was totally, I, you know, sometimes I just stare at these sets. And if I, if something doesn't like pop right out at me, I put it aside and go on to something else. I don't want to do something that isn't prepared in my head, first of all, you know. You know it's going to be detailed because it's the way I work. My brain just thinks detail. And little things, little additions. And I love that. And I don't mind that I take a little bit of time to get it up. And don't get me wrong, my friends. I love the clean and simple cards. I think they're elegant. I think they're beautiful. And I think that the people that create them, that's the way their mind works. And it's gorgeous. Uh, I have seen some clean and simple cards that has maybe three elements on it. That's absolutely breathtaking. So, um, you know, to each his own and how we create. For some reason, my art glitter glue was coming out in dot globs. Just da 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 like SOS. Like a Pac-Man thing. You know? Yeah, my brain's crazy too. You know that. Oh, see my animals? I had them so nice, two by two. You know? They were, uh, 
what am I, I don't know, I'm answering an email or something there. I have no idea. I'm just, something was dinging and I had to see what it was. I'm so nosy. So anyway, I turned the fan on beside me. I have the fan on my feet because I like to keep my slippers on. So I sweat to death. And <laughs> I bent the fan too high and it blew my characters across the island. <laughs> I had to go and pick them up. So I just threw them on the paper and I thought, good night. I'm going to be um, designing with them. So what can I do? They don't look as pretty as it did at the start. <laughs> that crazy fan. It just, I got to be thinking of stuff I have close by. And if the thing is facing down, you know. Oh, it has a, a stand on it. That's why it's raised up. And then I just grab it and honk it down and put it at my feet. And there you go. So here we have it. There's our envelope, my friends. How easy peasy is this envelope? Really? For a card like this where you have two seesaw elements, okay? You have two things going on, two pulled tabs and that way you get to have three or four scenes whatever you want to create I have to um, I have to grab my card that I made just a second okay I'm back it's nine and three quarters no excuse me nine and a quarter by three and three quarters so nine and a quarter inches long that's how long this white piece is now, if you're going to measure it from the pull tabs that stick out, I'm going to push the pull tabs all the way up and all the way down. And let's see what we have if we do it that way. So we have 12, 13 inches going down. So it's 13 inches from the top of the pull tab to the bottom, bottom of the pull tab. Now, I have added elements, and you'll see why it's that long but it does not look out of place. When you push those pull tabs in, if you do two seesaws, my friends, and you push those pull tabs in, and your card is vertical on the slim line, up and down, you don't notice that at all. This does not look huge. It looks super fun. This slim line die is absolutely a die I would want to have I bought it myself. I did not get this in my design team project. I ordered it because the seesaw slider. And sometimes that's what I do. I wait to get my design team project, uh, whatever's in the release that they want me to create with that I receive. Thank you so much, Angie and everybody, Stephanie, all the design team members over on LDRS Creative for being so kind to me. Angie, you have always been over, over generous in your giving to me as a designer and I sure appreciate that and uh, I hope everybody goes over and checks these out because they are affordable and as you can see they're adorable so my little green eyes they told yeah I can't figure out whether <laughs> this is the figure out part you want to have those scallops directly in all I had to do was measure it like you know um, yeah, I, I don't know what I'm thinking here. Okay, here's where I start the measure. One, two, three, four, five. It was five over on each side. And then I cut it off and I punched it out. And I only had to do it twice. That's a miracle. I only messed up once. And then I made another one. But I expect it so it doesn't bother me anymore. I don't get upset. Now, if I had to do it five times, oh yeah. I'd probably be a little cross at myself. But... Here, look it, it worked out perfect. And is this not the perfect envelope for a slider? You're sliding it down into the envelope. It's a slider card with a slider envelope. You cannot get any better than that. You want to cut it off on the bottom, not where your pull tab is, but where the actual um, design is on your slider. And I love the way the hills are just two different greens. I used um, cloud dye and punched all different, you know, four different, uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five. So I probably punched two out and then cut them, two papers each. I didn't waste, I didn't waste paper. And I'm just checking it there. Sometimes I have to get out of the light to see my measurement. So here you have it. Now my decision making here is on the bevel. How high do I want the actual bevel? You know, 
Now here I want to cut a piece off to put on the bottom. I was going to put something on the bottom that would stop the card from sliding out. Okay, but the problem with this, I'll tell you right now, you can't have a bevel that's too beveled. <laughs> it's got to be a wee bevel because you have straight paper, right? It's not going to bend without making creases. There you go. See, if you have just what I just showed you, and then you put acetate a little, you know, on the flat side, you don't bevel it hardly at all, you can do this and add that little thing on the bottom, but you are going to have to take your cutting knife and cut out the exact measurement of that slider uh, measurement. You know what it reminds me of is a um, medical stick that you put in your mouth and you say, say, ah, and the doctor, you know, on your kids, they put it on, they choke to death because they're, they've got it too far on their tongue and they're, ah, stop moving. The doctor wants you to say, ah, <laughs> remember those days? Oh yeah. <laughs> so it reminds me of one of those sticks. So you, you have to make, you can cut it out. You don't have to cut all the way across to have your mechanism uh, slide out the bottom. Just measure it, you know. It, it, I'll tell you what it measures if you want to know. You would just have to cut out uh, three quarters of an inch over on the bottom and let it slide out. That way you have some on paper on one side and the rest of the paper on the other. And the slider fits right into the hole. That would be awesome that it looked nice and clean and it wouldn't look like it was like half you only have half you know if you cut it off right there it would look crazy why do you have that there you have to cut that piece that three quarter inch piece in between the two marks that you scored easy peasy as that you are going to love this please try it out you will love it number one it gets rid of stash I mean this is the key if you're buying stuff, as I've been doing, uh, you want to use up old supplies. It just makes you feel good. Get rid of them. Use them up. No matter what the project is that you want to do, you don't have to go this extreme on each one of them. This is an extreme card. It's extremely beautiful. That's what it is. It's not extreme in the fact that it's anything that, you know, anybody can do this card. So... Uh, it's just extremely cute and it takes some time and it is detailed so you know you add your your person to your cards when people get your cards they're gonna know what kind of card they're gonna receive um, I have a friend in um, let me see where she lives here oh I, so many but uh, when I received she's in Australia when I receive her cards they're clean and simple but I always love them because I look at them and they're just so perfect they're so right for a clean and simple card and uh, it's beautiful you know people think that uh, when they send me that, that they can't send me cards because I'd be critiquing them or they wouldn't be as intense you know my cards aren't anything special my friends they're just fun there's nothing in them there isn't anything, not nothing, there isn't anything that I do that I don't figure you can do too if you want to, uh, if you have the supplies to do it. And most of us do if we're card makers. So the reason I put the orange tape on is just for security reasons. I know it's really sticky and <laughs> for some reason it was warped at the bottom. I didn't, uh, you can see I had to use the skinny tape so that you didn't see any of the tape through there. I must have measured a little when I was punching it I didn't push it over and make it tight to the punch but that's okay nobody's going to see it uh, you're the only one that's going to know it's a little off at the bottom but when you fold it it doesn't look like it it's only when you put your tape on it now I had to decide how high I want this bevel okay put your one side of the bevel on first that way it's secure the other side will fold down to where you can measure so um, you know it's probably better that you do it like I did before you put the tape on I did I knew exactly how much this was going to be uh, as far as the lift on it it's not extreme as you can see 
I'll measure it for you once again. I'm, it's right here. So at, in the middle of the bevel to the end of the card base is three quarters of an inch. That's not bad, is it? That's not really that bad. And um, it's gorgeous. Now, what I said before, my friends, is you can decorate on the acetate and the portion of the scallop card to add to each scene. I have one, two, three, I have four scenes going on in my barnyard, four different scenes. The top of the scenes will be the bottom of the scene above it, if that makes any sense. It's going to ground my scene above it. So whatever I put on there, it's going to ground the scene above it. And I'll show you as I get creating what I mean on that. So the top portions of the bottom scene, the top portions will be the bottom portion of my scene above it. Does that help? I don't know. That's just how I'm thinking here. Now, I began with putting the largest scenes on. I did this with my hot glue gun. Um, it will wobble a little bit until you get all of the features on there, just at the beginning here. Don't put too much glue. That is not going to help you. Hot glue is great because it's thick, it's heavy, and I need it. Now, I didn't feel like a tractor underneath there was the right thing to do. It was two uh, clunky elements together. You want to separate your clunky elements and put small elements underneath, then a clunky one, then a small one, then a clunky one. So. It just didn't look good to have my barn in the air on top of a tractor that's going to go by. Even though they're different scenes, that doesn't work. Okay, you don't want it to, the heaviness to overload itself onto your project. So be mindful of that with whatever you're using. Don't clunk two heavy items, two focal points together. Separate them. And I'll show you how I did it now. I don't put any glue on other than the middle, the bottom of this slider, okay, the barn. I put, I made everything to go with that big shaker barn, which isn't thick, my friends. It's not thick. If you look at it from the sides, it is not, it doesn't stand out as being this big shaker. It just stands out because it's so crazy cute. Every window has a different colored bead. I mean, it has little animals all around it. So what I do is I'm making my middle scene. Then I will put it, once I figure out where it's going to be, uh, you don't want one side heavier than the other side. So these are the things that I think of when I'm creating. I need some things flat because when that slider goes over, it can't hit anything. So all you're going to do is glue it, right? Now on this slider element, I'll show you once we get back over there on the bottom, I put bunnies. I put that um, wag, that, uh, what do they call that wagon thing? You put all your uh, dirt or your pumpkins, in this case, my wheelbarrow. There it is. I have, I'm look right out my window, I can see our wheelbarrows. So you, you get your wheelbarrow and that's going to be my bottom element because I have a lot of animals I have to get on this card, about 40 of them. So you placement is everything on here, okay? So it has this little cow with a duck. <laughs> if you can get by the cuteness of all this stuff, you're in, you're in. But um, it's like, I'll tell you what, I was thinking, what am I gonna put here? Because you don't wanna have two tractors going. You don't wanna have two tractors going. In the same, you know, even though one would be in a different, they're both going uh, horizontal, but and they're both in different placements, but they look odd, they're heavy, it doesn't look right. So, my wheelbarrow there with the dirt has to be closer to the bottom of my barn, okay? It will be above that bunny that's in the wheelbarrow. Then, alongside the wheelbarrow, I have this beautiful can of flowers. And then I have these little ducks that are walking by in opposite directions. One's attached to the pig and the other one is separate. 
And I thought to myself, okay, what do you need? I took the LDRS Creative Hybrid inks. Fabulous inks, my friends. Juicy, fabulous hybrid inks. Um, like I told you, there's a dye ink that dries quickly. There's a hybrid ink that gives you time in between if you're going to put embossing powder on it. And then you have the, um, oh, your um, pigment inks. Pigment, pigment, my little piggy. I should have thought of that. So it's dye, your hybrid, and your pigment. Pigment inks take a little while to dry, so you can really emboss on top of that. It's a little more juicy. Hybrids, and for hybrid inks is vibrant, my friends. And the thing that I realize now, I love the, to buy anything in the little cubes. It's quick to use, and uh, it doesn't take up as much space. So that's just my thought in there. So I ran, oh yeah, beautiful flowers. Let's get that by. I had this LDRS Creative die that's called Sun and Clouds die set from LDRS Creative, of course. I got it out of my stash. I have not cut them. I try to not cut my pieces apart if I can help it. I have those little zipped up bags, so I don't mind putting what extras I have in with the different um, larger bags for my design team projects or any projects that I have uh, that I have going on. So I make plenty, and I like this will go in that other envelope that I have all of the slimline stuff already cut out so I can add it to that card. It's already easy peasy ready to go if somebody asks me to make them a card. So here we are. You have to have this sun. Here comes the colors of a farm. The beautiful sun coming up. The seagulls. Well in my case they would I've got bluebirds, I've got cardinals, I've got yellow belly sapsuckers, I've got uh, I've got every bird there is other than a flamingo. I mean, <laughs> I have beautiful birds, doves. When you get up, say at five o'clock, four o'clock when the sun is coming up and I look out into my yard and the birds are just chirping, unless I have a migraine, then I want them to just, you know, stop chirping. I mean, have yourself a rest day, birds. But on a normal day, I love it. It's beautiful. So what I thought of was clouds. Of course, my scene had to have clouds and a sun. It just brightens it up. So I got this die out. There's nothing wrong with grabbing from this set, that set, you know. Um, if you're designing, especially for me, it's LDRS Creative, and I go to other sets. And look at that. I have these birds. I'll put three of them. And if you're new to stamping, keep your... Uh, elements in odd numbers. That's always good to know. And uh, look how pretty that is. It stabilizes the tractor on the bottom. It gives it some um, grounding work. And on this sun, it has a middle for it that you can lift up. I don't think I did lift it up. No, I didn't have to. So it's nice that I have my card here. I'm just taking off the extra glue. And then it has this little bunny reaching up, like it's reaching up to touch one of those birds. She's right on top of the ladder. And I want to keep my ladder free of any elements because I'm going to decorate on the acetate uh, and the, uh, the envelope part. So I know that there's going to be more scene builders on my acetate envelope. So here, uh, this is the fun part. This is what we love to do. We're coming down to almost the end of the tutorial. And um, just have fun with it. You can make different scenes on the same card. You don't have to stick to one scene, especially on a slimline card. It gives you so many. If you put hills on it like I did, these are green grass hills. Another thing you could do is you could add a stencil and put stencil grass on top of it to get more dimension. Excuse me, I didn't need more dimension. I have too much going on already. So to leave it plain, I have to cover it, look that there. There's where I covered that little brad, that teensy weensy brad, and I put it on the hill with the tractor. Now, because the tractor's to the far right, my other tractor's more to the left, it does ground this picture. And you're going to pick up and lay down and pick up and lay down a thousand times with these images, you know. And 
but you'll know what to do. It isn't, oh, excuse me. Oh, he wants to be the preeminence of this video, doesn't he, all the time? Look at that. Don't be looking at these. And then this little bunny is sitting down. How cute is that? So she went up on the pumpkin um, in the wheelbarrow. I mean, just gorgeous. Now I'm going to slide it in to make sure it slides. Oh, yeah. Look at the scene you have. It's so pretty in there. Do, 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 do. You just take it. And I must have went up and down on these uh, pull tabs a billion times. I'm going to slow it down. But look at the fun somebody's going to have. And then on the back, you can put whatever sentiment you want. If it's like happy birthday, sixth birthday, you can make a great big six and put it on the back of this slimline card in colorful colors when you die cut the letters or however you want to do it. And look at that. Doesn't that look cute? I am going to slow that down. Even though I am keeping this portion in, I didn't uh, splice it as far as slowing it down for you because on the end part, because we're coming up to the end, I did slow it down. So I'll explain this really quickly. I wanted to use the clouds because I have clouds in the actual image. So I'm going to use the clouds up on the pull tab. I thought that would be cute at the top. And then I'm going to put all the little extra critters that I have as they work in the scene. And I'm going to put them on the scallop paper and also you know, it's going to go half and half. It's going to be some of the image will be on the acetate and some will be on the actual paper line. So I think that's kind of cute. And then when you take out the scene, it's just not going to have those few little critters on it. But when you put it back in the envelope, you're going to have a scene that is, you get all this addition to it, right? You get the additional little critters and the additional fun. You used up what you had. You don't have to store too much, you know, for another project. And um, you're just using it flat and it goes along with each individual scene. So like I said, if you have the card, when you look at it in the upcoming tutorial that slowed down, you're having a portion of scenery on the top on the slider. Then you have another slider that has an individual scene, which is the barn and the ladder. Then you go down, you have another tractor. All of these images are flat. They don't move. They're just a tiny, oh yes, aren't they gorgeous? Oh, that's beautiful, Carol. Yes, I know it is. Thank you. And then, <laughs> um, and then see how I just slid those clouds down behind the critter and you have a fun pull tab that's secure, it's heavy weighted, and uh, you're going to not have to worry at all to pull these tabs. So like I said, you have four scenes, four of them move, they have movable objects, and then you're going to take all the rest of the critters, you're going to add them to the scene, just pull down that tab and add them going up and on the one that's at the top, pull it up and add whatever you can to the top. It's not going, your pull tabs aren't going to affect your envelope, as you can see. They're additional. They're just right there for your recipient to have fun with. How do you get this out of the beveled envelope, you ask me? Very simple. Just grab one of the tabs and you'll be able to release it. It's kind of hard, isn't it, with the lighting? There you go. It's that easy peasy. Well, I really appreciate you dropping by and viewing my tutorial for a whole hour. I can't express enough how much it means to me that you subscribe to my channel and that you're such an encouragement to me. And at the end of my tutorial, as I'm showing you this, I tried to slow it down to a normal, below normal speed so you could see everything. But at the end of my tutorials, I have a picture of myself in the upper left corner. It's there because if you press that picture of me, you, you're subscribed. So that's why that's there. So if you press it, you're subscribed. And then go to the front and press the bell. And that will come up on your video. 
every time I share something, you will get an alert that I have put a project up. And that means a lot to me, so I appreciate it. I don't know if I've ever said that in too many tutorials, that my head is there to press it to subscribe. <laughs> no other reason. So there you have it, my friends. Uh, have yourself a blessed week. I am moving on to my next project to put up for you. I hope everyone is staying well and having a really good week. So that is it. And I will talk to you on the next tutorial. Bye now. Enjoy the pictures also. Thanks very much. See you later. Bye.